Good evening. We're going to call the meeting to order at 7.08. If you could please stand for the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I just want to welcome everybody to the reorganization meeting and of the Grand Island Central School District Board of Education. The closest emergency exit is to the door located behind me and the door over there. Um, please turn off all your cell phones, silence any other electronic devices that you may have with you. Um, present tonight in tonight's meeting is trustee Glenn Bovac, trustee Jay Grover, trustee Nicole Novak, Dr. Brian Graham, superintendent, myself, district clerk Jude Kuhn, trustee Ashley Dreyer, trustee Susan Marston, trustee Danielle Bruno, welcome. And we have the assistant superintendent for curriculum, staff development, and human resources, Michael Loria. Welcome for your first meeting. <laughs> we have the Assistant Superintendent for People Services, Cheryl Cardone, and Assistant Superintendent, Dr. Ruby Harris of School Business and Finance. Welcome, everybody. To begin tonight's meeting, may I have a nomination for president? Sorry, I was not on. Did everybody hear me? Okay. Okay. Are there any other nominations for president? Okay. May I have a vote for Ashley Dreyer for president? Starting with Glenn. Yes. 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 Six zero. Ashley Dreyer is your president for the next 21-22 school year. Congratulations. You may take over the meeting. I'm going to swear Ashley in first. Do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of New York State, and the Constitution of New York State, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of, and that I will faithfully discharge, discharge the duties of, Board of Education President, Board of Education President, according to the best of my ability, according to the best of my ability. If I could have a nomination for vice president, please. Um, I would like to nominate Sue Marston. I can have a second. Um, all in favor? Uh, I don't know if we, we go around. Aye. 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 Carried seven, uh, six zero. And I, Susan Marston, now I'm aware that I will support the Constitution of the United States. 
and the Constitution of the State of New York. And then I will faithfully discharge the duties of Vice President of the Board of Education of Renown Schools. Vice President of the According to the past amendment. Thank you. Congratulations. Okay, if I could have a motion. Oh, did we do that? I don't know about If I could have a motion to approve uh, the Board of Education appointments items number one through 40, effective July 1st, 2021 through June 30th, 2022, please. Motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6 0. If I could have a motion to approve the following Board of Education committee appointments. Um, so usually we discuss those first actually to see if any changes are needed. So I know I know Joy wanted to stay on the committee, but she could. She would, I believe she would like to move from Sidway to Catalan and she could put some mm -hmm. daughter to move to Catalan. I'd like to stay on the high school if I could. I'd do some other things with me to stay there. So makes sense. Okay. I will stay on the um oh. I think I said so right now. Mm. I'll stay on the PTO Council. Okay. Does anyone want the uh, middle school PTO? Middle school? Okay. Sounds good. Um and then what about Okay. What about the um, delegate assembly? Well, I'll just wait. We got twenty percent. Oh. Okay. Okay. Um, delegate assembly. Do we still have the same for that? A legislator, and then there's budget and finance team. That's for the Erie County. Association of School Boards. Um, I I will do the um, legislative if, no, unless anybody else wants it. I'm the legislative and the delegate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Budget and finance. Yeah. 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 Um. Now, Gizba, it was Sue and. Do we have an alternate for that? I could be an alternative. Okay. Yeah. Well, is that Glenn or Jay? Is it Glenn or Jay? Do you Glenn? Okay. Internal audit, delegate, and alternate. Yeah, I, you know, I'm okay. Okay. Um, so, I'll be so let's see. There's different committees as well. There was the district policy committee. Um, I was on there with Joy and Glenn, or no, I was on there with Jay rather. Um, so, and I'm fine with if anyone wants a, a committee or one of my roles, I'm trying to um, let them. Yeah. Sure. Um, which which one do you want to know about? Well, we're at the district policy. I'm just trying to Danielle yeah. and uh, understand sure. when they are. Um, Usually, some uh, after three forty-five. If you need later than that, we don't have problem. We usually try to take the day of before meeting, but if you still like to get along, we can. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was really no day. Nice <laughs> <laughs> right. The district policy committee works for me. Okay, so policy. Okay, so we'll have, um, I will put down uh, for district policy, I will put down Danielle and Jay. And then Community Relations Committee. Community Relations has met in the past. We did not meet last year. So in the past, when Lori Sasenko was leading it, mm -hmm. we met at 6.30, usually from 6.30 to 7.30. 
a district office uh, four or five times a year. Yes, PM. And uh, the first task would be to look at the community uh, survey that was done at the board or at, during the board elections and the budget vote. And uh, from there, we would be considering everything that we can do to build upon community relations. I can do that too. Okay. Well, yeah, I know. I mean, it's, we just ended up during the COVID year, we took a year off. But, yeah. And it's perfectly fine to have more than one board member. Yeah, yeah. So that's okay. Would, would, would the times that all meetings be shared with the full board and that report come afterwards? Which I think it's been sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll put uh, Danielle and Jay down for that and community education. Um, I would like to do that. I don't know if anyone else would like to do that too. It says one board member, but we could certainly do that. Um, Ruby, the community ed advisory is usually set up between you and uh, Amy Boutte. Yes. Yeah. So we did not meet at all during the COVID year. I think we met two or three times the year prior. Yeah. I think two. We used to meet like right after school, I think. Yes. Okay. I can do that one. Okay. So I'll put down myself and Nicole. Um, food service. Um, I would like to see two and it's one or two. So if anyone else wants to do that, I think that's two or five. Yeah, I one. Okay, I'm not answering. Yeah, it's one of the But I think that's a two o'clock. I think those. Yeah. 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 We usually try to include the head cooks yeah. as well as Mr. Smith and Ruby and myself. And Board and then facilities, it was Glenn Joy and myself. I don't know, Glenn, if you were still interested in that. Yeah. Facilities. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think Joy liked that one too. Mm -hmm. Of us, I can still do that one too. Um, so there's three of us, Glenn Joy and myself. But we will be having uh, smaller communities as well, developed for district facilities like that. I think we were going to do some small as we move through the last project. Sure. Yeah. All right. Um, so we just have you on food service. Is that okay? No, that's fine. Okay. I can stay on it. I was not. Oh, you want to? Just okay. me. We didn't meet. So I've never got to. Okay. So I will put your name down. We will have meetings. So we're going to have a hard one this year. Okay. Whenever, I don't see the wellness committee on this year. Are we going to continue that? Or? Sure. Uh, yeah. are, you, are you talking about the joint between the town? Yes. That's up to. Well, I didn't. I Oh, yeah, that old, you know, you did do her and then Robin, like, we can do whatever you want. Anybody else want to do wellness? Yeah. After four, we could do this. Okay. All right, Danielle, I'll put you down for that. And then Sue as well, correct? Yep, I have two and I have Danielle for that. Okay. Um, so if I could have a motion to approve the Board of Education Committee appointments. A motion. And a second. I'll second. All in favor? <laughs> All right. Hi. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6-0. So, yeah. No, go ahead. Um, okay, and then a motion to approve the uh, following general organization items one through six. Um, I have a motion for that as well. I will make a motion. 
And a second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6 0. Um, authorization for superintendent to, uh, for change orders, D. If I could have a motion for that. And a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. And um, I just wanted, I don't know when we did roll call, we did mention that uh, Joy was excused to still put that in the, uh, put that in the beginning of our minutes. And if I could have a motion to adjourn the reorganizational meeting and begin the uh, regular board meeting. And a second? All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. All right. Um, so if we could have a motion to, we already um, did the pledge and do we, uh, I don't think the announcements are the same. Let's see what we did this and recall. With that, um, Joy is excused for this meeting as well. Um, if I could have a motion to approve the reorganization agenda for July 6, 2021, please. And a second. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Uh, motion carried 7 6 0. Um, and if I could have an approval of the agenda for July 6, 2021. Motion. Oh, we just, oh, we just did both. We did, yeah, we just did a reorg. Sorry. So that was a reorg. I would say with the addition of the wellness committee. Yes, but, okay. So let's go. Do you want to go back? Uh, let's do an approval of the reorganization agenda for July 6, 2021. That includes the wellness committee. If I could have a motion for that, please. We'll re-vote on this one with that. And a second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6-0. And then an approval of the agenda for July 6, 2021, please. And a second. All second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 6 0. And if I could have a motion to approve the minutes from June 21st, 2021, please. I'll motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any extensions? Motion carried 6 0. Ashley? Yeah. Could we just move correspondence down a little bit? We're, we're not, we think we're going to have a special guest here tonight to be okay. recognized, but well, we started a few minutes early. So if we just, yeah. yeah. We'll just, you know, I sent a text just in case, but haven't heard that yet. Okay. Um, so we will go on to the public comment session agenda items only. I don't have a sheet, but did you have anyone sign up? No, no sign up for that one. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. No. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move on to curriculum and instruction. Um, it looks like we just have one item for action. Um, did you want to talk about any items? Yeah, I'll just say that we have three. Um, Proposals for curricular summer work. It's nice to see our teachers going back into our summer curriculum preparing for next year. So we're asking for the board to take action on those items. Okay, if I could have a motion to approve curriculum and instruction A, please. Um, and a second? second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any Aye. objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. And um, under personnel instructional, if I could have a motion to approve. PI1 and PI2, please. Then we, uh, I, I think two things on the agenda are the approval of an extension for Mr. Graham's, Dr. Graham's contract for another year. Mm -hmm. um, and I also think that we're uh, naming a new principal at uh, the high school mm -hmm. um, who we yeah. have introduced and has been recommended, recommended, recommended by uh, administration. So I'll yeah. just note that before we. Okay. Sounds good. Any, um, second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carried 6 0. And I believe we have an introduction. We do. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, to all of you Mr. Roger Broker. Uh, Roger, if you could uh, stand up at the podium, that would be great. Uh, we're introducing him as our new high school principal starting around July 19th. Uh, Mr. Broker is uh, certificated in social studies grades 7 through 12 
as well as elementary education, grades one through six. He has a master's degree in creative and creativity and applied leadership from Buffalo State College. And he also has his administration degree from Canisius College. Uh, Roger started teaching social studies at the Falk School in 2002. Uh, transitioned to the Charter School for Applied Technologies where he taught sixth grade until 2007. In 2007, he began teaching technology for elementary and middle school students, and he was named the technology coordinator there as well. He did this work until he transitioned to Erie One BOCES as a building trades instructor. Mr. Broker taught building trades until 2018. It was then he became an assistant principal for the Edge Academy and the Twilight Program. And from there, he moved to being an assistant principal at the Harkness CTE Program. Mr. Broker's references spoke about his ability to connect with all school stakeholders, especially students, he is outstanding at building positive relationships. He's visible and considered a technology expert. On a side note, Mr. Broker also has a passion for playing the guitar and is well known as a singer as well. We're very pleased to welcome Mr. Broker to the district. Mr. Broker, would you care to say a few words? Yeah, if you want to, you can hold the mic if you'd like. <laughs> it's a little low. I'd like to say, uh, you know, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity as a member of the community here. And also, uh, as I said, I'm very invested in doing the best job possible. And I look forward to spending the next summer here uh, really meeting and talking to everybody in the building and in the community and uh, getting to work right away and picking up with the great job that Mr. Loria has left me. So uh, again, thank you so much for this opportunity and uh, I look forward to seeing you all and working with you all for a long time in the future. You're also free to go to Adrian's after. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So moving on to personnel non-instructional, if I could have a motion to approve non-instructional PNI 1 and PNI 2, please. Oh. And a second? All second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6-0. I believe we have some good news we to talk about. So, we have a, I was wondering as, as Ashley's getting ready, uh, Esten, if you could maybe stand at the podium, would that be okay? Great, and Stacy, if you want to come up too. All right, so there was a competition at the USA Powerlifting Nationals in Daytona Beach, Florida. Allie won eight to 13 year old team division and in the process set a New York State record for her age division, lifting 92 pounds. Um, thank you to all our teachers who allowed her to miss a few days of classes <laughs> and represent her gym, uh, mustache, muscle, and fitness in um, the in state in this competition. So, congratulations. I don't know if you want to say a few words about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And her gym gave her something to represent. Wow. So, staff strong. Is it okay if you pass around? So is this a record? Yeah, New York State record wow. for eight to thirteen year old age division. So it's really awesome. And a nice medal and some recognition and that's fantastic. And it looks like you have a fan base. I think maybe your dad and I'm not sure who else with you. Oh yes, please would you like to introduce? Want me to do it? <laughs> I'm gonna guess it's me. Um, Dad, uh, George is here. 
and her sister, um, Audrey. <laughs> I love that. Thank you very yeah, Oh, this is this is great. All right, three, two, one, perfect. Congratulations. Thank you. No obligation to stay. So now you're on to the finance section with Dr. Harris. Okay. Well, mine isn't as short as my guidebook for the one uh, one area one one day. Uh, but just a couple of items. Um, item A is obsolete equipment uh, in the Department of Athletics. That is for a portable scoreboard that uh, Mr. Roth is declaring obsolete. B is uh, for two 2021-22 transportation contracts. One is for Monroe One BOCES, and the other is for Buffalo Transportation. You will see another one in the near future for Buffalo Transportation for the school year once you get that squared away. And item C is the driver's education contract for O'Day's School of Driving, uh, which we provide at the high school. Okay, if I can have a motion to approve finance A and B, please. And a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any objections? Any abstentions? Motion carries 6 0. Did you do A, B, C, or just A, B? Uh, I just did A, B, it says. Um, so if I can have a motion to approve B, the driver education contract, please. Oh, that's information. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. okay. Yeah, that's, okay. It says okay. information on the other back. Okay. Um, the next item on here is the treasurer's report. There are two reports here. That is for March and April. You also have a revenue status report to go alongside that. And um, there were a couple budget transfers under the $15,000 for the month of June. And then the May check warrants for um, accounts payable. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Moving on to special education, if I could have uh, motion to approve uh, services A and B, please. Oh, oh Cheryl, did you want to say yeah. anything about yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Okay. It just looks like it just looks like the standard standard committee meeting. Yeah. Standard committee meeting appointment um, or service appointment. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Any objections? Any extension? Motion carries 6 0. Thank you. You're welcome. And that brings us to the superintendent's report with Dr. Graham. Thank you very much. Just wanted to give the board an update and the community an update uh, regarding uh, face coverings for our summer programming. I did reach out to our attorney at Hudson and Russ, and we discussed at great length if we had any flexibility in having masks be optional for the summer for teaching and learning activities. Uh, it's important for the board and community to know that the New York State Department of Health filed an emergency regulation with the Department of State uh, on June 23rd. That regulation does require uh, mask wearing in pre-kindergarten to 12th grade schools. Also, that, that includes public transit, homeless shelters, correctional facilities, nursing homes, and other healthcare settings. 
It's my understanding, though, that the mask mandate that is currently on the books is set to expire August 23rd. So we'll be looking uh, forward to any additional guidance or changes that hopefully will be communicated soon to school districts regarding that mandate. And uh, we're ready you know, to pivot when uh, we get permission to do so. Any, any questions? So I just say what that means for summer school. Sure, yeah, as far as I know, it, particularly because we have an official summer school program that's quite robust, you know, we have general ed and uh, special education, uh, we believe we absolutely must know their superintendents do so as well. For other districts that are running camps, some districts may choose to try to make that optional for camps, not for uh, official summer school programs. We are, absolutely. So will that be the same thing as the kids that participated in the... Yep, sports camp and things like that. Yeah. Yep, so I, I've walked through a few times, kids are wearing masks when, when they're close together. A lot of their stuff is done outdoors, you know, so that makes it mask less. And of course, when they're swimming, it's masked less as well. Brian, when they came out with that, um, that when, when they released that information, was there anything else that followed up in terms of why the governor and others have felt that schools should be treated differently than other activities, which obviously I think people are not wearing masks at this point in time? Yeah, excellent question. We have received zero information from the New York State Department of Health. Uh, I've written, you know, and asked for that. I also sent uh, the survey results, uh, you know, that we shared uh, last time, but we're not getting any response back from the New York State Department of Health. And I would also add that this caught people by surprise. There was no announcement of the emergency regulation that was uh, given to the Secretary of State uh, for, for New York on June 23rd. There was no uh, memo, you know, that, so it, I became aware of it when we talked to our attorney. Okay. Thank you. I do want to let the board know, though, uh, through the support of the federal dollars, Ruby and Jim Rosler, and our principals, uh, we're looking into purchasing, and I think we have submitted uh, our purchases for portable air conditioners for the classrooms that will host summer teaching and learning. I think we're uh, looking at purchasing 55 of those, uh, and I know Mr. Rosler is working with Ruby on that. Uh, Ruby, any updates on that? We did. Sorry, we did um, create two purchase orders to send to the different vendors um, so they can begin the order. Uh, once I have a estimate date of receiving them, uh, or they may, I'm assuming they'll be in this week, but um, I will provide that information to Dr. Grimm, and he can report it back out. Good. And Cheryl, I know that many of your students in the special ed program already have the need for air conditioners. So I think, I think you told me there are at least three classrooms already outfitted with air conditioners. So there's already, so there's already three or three classes outfitted, and um, Hillary um, and Max and Adam also additionally helped with um, moving some of our students into other rooms that had that excess air conditioner because of the medical needs of our students. So, which um, we are very appreciative of today since today was the start of summer school. Right. Good. Any questions about that? Um, Brian, uh, somewhat related question, but um, as much as we'd like to think summer just started, um, we got six, seven weeks until we go back to school. So, um, has the state given any guidance whatsoever in terms of what schools might look like in in our case, before Labor Day, because we opened before Labor Day, I believe the check. And a timeline. Right, and a timeline of what we're supposed to do, or is the state, as usual, completely silent and going to throw something at us at the last minute? Yeah, there is no uh, communication whatsoever from the state. Okay. Is there anything we can do to push them to tell us something mm -hmm. so we don't have to react very quickly and without time to react like we had to do last year? Yep. We, we did already send some formal communication, but we can uh, revisit that for sure. Okay. Yeah. And if there's anything we can do to push that, we absolutely. Be, I would be happy to do so. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Also, under the Superintendent's report today, uh, the last board meeting we talked about surveying uh, the parents who left 
Grand Island at the end of uh, the 2019-2020 school year and did not return for the 2020-2021. I want to thank Robin Quitek for working on this. It was kind of a big project and she also uh, used Sue Hall. They created this massive spreadsheet and from that spreadsheet uh, various pivot tables and so forth. But at the end we were able to email uh, families who left the district. Uh, I know that the email went out to 141 families uh, so that they received that survey. Uh, I shouldn't say families, 141 email addresses related to families. Um, remember that uh, one family could have one email going to them or two uh, for mom and dad or sometimes three, you know, if there's a step parent involved. Uh, so from there, 25 families did respond to the survey. Of the 25, 11 families indicated their children would be returning to school. Uh, in those 11 families, they represent 21 students. Uh, two of those students are going to youth for second grade, uh, so that was important information. And also uh, through our central registration process, it, interestingly, we've had a few children coming out of Sidway going from first to second grade to youth who have left the district as well. So our numbers have actually not really moved. We predicted 120, I think we're at about 119. Max, I think the last time you and I talked, it was between 115 and 119. Mm -hmm. Any changes that you're aware of? No, we're at 119. 119. So uh, 24, 24, we have five teachers. So we'll continue to watch it very carefully. On the other end of the spectrum in Mr. Antonelli's building, we're looking at kindergarten. Um, I think, Mr. Antonelli, you're close to 200. At kindergarten, we predicted 220. So we're going to watch both of those grade levels very carefully. And we will adjust and adapt uh, to the needs of our class class sizes as, as appropriate. Okay. So we got 25 families who responded to the survey, and 11 of those families who represent 21 children uh, indicated their kids were coming back. Oh, I don't, I don't recall that number. Yeah. Um, no, but I have the spreadsheet and I can look at Yeah. So the 21 uh, children they represent are, you know, K to 12. Yeah. Are there any second graders that were part of it? Sure. I mean, a lot of people didn't respond to the survey because we only had 25 families respond to the survey. And there were 141 actual emails that went out. So, yeah. So, so something we, we're still watching and still watch very carefully and make an adjustment. And remember, you know, the plan is to use the federal dollars um, if we needed to hire another teacher because it wasn't in our budget at the end of May. Yeah, I, I think you're right, Sue. I think that's correct. Yeah, I think this big late August. Yeah, and it could be could be kindergarten too, uh, just because we're just about 200. We predicted 220, so keep an eye on that. Yeah. So Max, just to take a note that you and I should talk again before you're ready to send letters home to second grade families. Okay. Thank you, that's all that I have.
Professor. Thank you. Do you have any plans for the athletic uh, facility signage? Sure. Um, I so I spoke with uh, John Roth uh, today, and he let me know that Jim Rosler, Dave Kress, and Ron Rose have a meeting on July 12th to talk about any new additions or needs of our turf fields, and one of them is about signage. One of uh, Mr. Roth's concerns beyond helping families know which fields to go to is about um, people bringing their pets to the turf field. So beyond general signage on where to go, we just want to make sure we're communicating to families not to bring their pets to, you know, the new turf field and so forth. So he did talk about um, adding signage, and Ruby, I know that you'll be communicating with your Rosler and whatever signs that they uh, decide uh, to add to the facility. Um, he also has an idea about um, having banners on the 10 light posts as you walk into the new uh, turf fields. And just those banners would celebrate the different sports in our in our district. So I like that idea, and I'm sure they'll, they'll talk some more about it on the 12th. Um, and he also wants to do some enhancements with some signage for the Lady Vikings on the portable fences, but they got to come up with a plan. It's, it's quite a chore to move those portable fences out and then to add a, you know, some signage there might be a bit of a challenge, but those are just some of the brainstorm ideas that they have. I know um, I've seen at some uh, events, seniors have had like different signs um, for sports as they played up. I know we've done it in the past. I'm not sure what we've done it for. If it's just that they made it to sectionals or got to a certain level. I know we've, I've seen it in the town, in the center there, um, at, by Town Hall. Uh, but I don't know if, if we discussed anything about maybe honoring seniors or if that's something we might want to look into. And then my other question was about the signs that you're thinking of with the pots or labeling uh, where to go for people. Will that come out of the capital project yes. funds then? Right, Ruby? Yes. Yes. That's what I was thinking about. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It wouldn't come out of the budget. <laughs> okay. I, I, that I'm aware of. I figured that would be, that would be a case. Sure. So a year ago, when we closed from March to June, there were several groups that got together and did signs for the graduating seniors. That was not done, from my understanding, this year at all. Uh, but, but to your point, I have driven throughout the community, and, and there are a few signs on some people's lawns. I just don't know where they came from or who, who created those. It, it was all donations, like student council, GITA helped support, and some other. Oh, and Joy's firm helped, uh, gave a donation for that. So. So, Ashley, did you mean you are more referring to Senior Night as far as athletics? So. Yeah, I, I just know, um, I've seen in different schools. I know um, at Lewis and Porter we have, so outside by our track and field, I noticed we had a band, we had little, we had signs for the seniors that were running yeah, track sure. and field their picture, their year, or whatever to honor seniors. I thought it was a nice idea. So um, I'm not sure how we paid for it. And I've seen it at other schools too. So I just wanted to see if you've noticed it anywhere else or anyone's noticed it anywhere else. And it's just a nice thing to do for our seniors because they dedicate so much of their free time to representing the school, just to, to, highlight, to highlight them and their, um, final seasons, but, um, you know, I don't know, I know I've seen it done for soccer at, um, in the town hall, like I said, but I don't think we've done anything like that before. Um, other than that. And I know Jude has some expertise in this area with the girls' soccer, yeah. especially when the girls advance to the playoffs. Yeah. I know that. So the, the parents pay for it all. Correct. Right. Yeah. So the parents, they all, you know, parents pay for their child. And then we just carry it kind of their year mm -hmm. and add to it. And at the uh, banquet, the seniors get to take the, all the kids sign the sign mm -hmm. for that senior, and then they take this little moment. Yeah. Okay. Well, 
Okay. So that's what we do is like sectionals like that, like we'll put here when we have white new territory, we'll keep it along the fence. And as soon as we go like far west regionals or the sectionals further, we'll take and put in the town hall area. And we have them there. Even the parents will go. Right. Yeah. Usually they have them. Okay. Each team and the parents. Yeah. Usually the parents of the captains. We've been doing it with the lady Viking soccer for 20 years. Yeah. We start with women. We would keep. I'm so happy for this right now. It's a lot lighter. Yeah. Well, it's a nice touch. So, yeah. And I hope it keeps going and I hope we expand it to other teams, which is great, especially. For seniors to have as a keepsake. I don't know if anyone has any other comments on signage for the Avenue Athletic Facility. No? All right, that brings us to the Board of Education meeting schedule for 21 and 22. Um, so, our survey results, our Google survey results, um, we had 66. 66.7% for A, and um, the rest was uh, B. So, if anyone has any comments on that, I know the one thing we did not discuss in relation to the schedule last time was whether we wanted to do a bus tour or meet at the different buildings. The year before, the plan was to meet at the different buildings throughout the year to see what the building needs are and do a little walking tour. Um, we started that, but then with the sound, we had some difficulty with um, the pandemic and, and getting the sound just right. So we uh, changed it to we would meet here um, for those other meetings. So I don't know if um, anyone had any thoughts first about bus tour or if we're okay with staying with that. But we, that was something um, we didn't talk about yet. I just I assumed everyone would want it to. Try it again and stay the same for the different buildings, but I just wanted to make sure of that before it. Just, so. I'm fine with this. Just at the request, if there's any major presentations that that are putting those on a date that we're here, mm -hmm. or we just make sure that the sound and audio is that one. Is yeah. pretty good. So okay. that would be my request. All right. So we'll keep it with um, we'll keep it with going to the different uh, buildings. And rotating through the buildings for um, to, to be at each building throughout the year on the schedule. Um, Actually, I just have to yeah. confirm with the town, make sure the, the two. Okay. So, yeah, just for joint meeting. You know, All right. Um, any other thoughts about the schedule for the meetings? Um, is this the one that we have? This is A, right? This is Woods Draft A. Okay. And I noticed the August dates are the 9th and 30th. You have to change, but you have that in pink. Yeah. The 30th. They can like with uh, late hire, so then okay. they can um, start the next day as the first day. Good. And for teachers, um, superintendents days. Of Okay, it's a discussion item, it's not an action item. So I don't know if anyone has any other thoughts about this schedule. No. Okay, do you want to check with the town and then put it up after or okay. let us know? If we should at least agree to the next meeting. Uh yes. We have August 9th, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And um is it I understand <laughs> um, I won't be so, the next one day, so just say no. Okay. Okay. So we have um, this draft. Does anyone have any other comments or concerns about this draft? This is, okay. So, so, Risa, so Jude will go ahead and you contact the town and then put, okay, put the uh, schedule up if the town says those dates are okay or want to continue with that. And if not, email us out and we'll respond to that okay so just to clarify we are taking action then on the entire well we don't need action but oh you don't need action yeah oh, got it. so okay so we can start penciling these dates then yep okay perfect yeah well, I think it will be the 
if it does, yeah, that's not good with the town, then we'll adjust those if needed. So post comment section in general is not included in this agenda. We did not have, yes. but we did, we did have a sign up, sorry. Um, so I'll say at this time, um, we'll call on public uh, comments from individuals who desire to address the Board of Education on any topic which is on the agenda. Residents who have previously signed up to speak will be recognized. Uh, when speaking, please identify yourself first. Um, speak clearly and loudly enough for everyone in the room to hear you. And speakers are requested to limit their remarks to no more than three minutes. Uh, to appoint a spokesperson if a concern is a group concern. And if necessary or desired, you may supplement verbal presentations with written reports. Personal comments toward a member of the community, staff, or Board of Education will not be considered appropriate. So at this time, we do have uh, one person that has signed up, Jennifer America. And if you could come up to the mic, please, and speak, that would be great. Hello. Hi. You just slide the just button up and it'll button turn button on. Slide up. Roger, if you can help them. Help them. Sorry. Sorry. Um, so since I am the only speaker, well, I would appreciate if I can have some extended time. I have some other parents who I'm kind of speaking for as well. Yeah. No, yeah. I mean, you can move. You can represent a group, but you can't um, have a ton of time for that. I mean, it says, you know, you could. Well, we could sit here and argue about, about it, it or just. You, you, you start nice. speaking and I'll tell you when you're group. All right. Good evening. My name is Jennifer America. As I walked into the school building today, I noticed not everyone wearing masks. The last time I was here, we were told to not work against each other, but with each other. When I organized our Grand Island Unmasked Our Children Rally, I extended the invitation to the district to unite, and no one attended or responded. You even have a teacher trying to incite others on Grand Island's local Facebook page. This is incredibly disappointing. Since the last board meeting, a lot has happened. First off, there was only four cases today in Erie County. School personnel have had ample time to vaccinate if they choose to. And we already know that there is minimal risks for children for COVID and they're not super spreaders. We have learned that children are breathing an unhealthy and dangerous amount of carbon monoxide. We also learned that masks contain many pathogens that cause illnesses to children. We were informed that suicide attempts have increased 51% in one month in our youth because these masks are creating depression, anxiety, and stress. We know to prevent suicide, we must connect our youth socially, but masks, barriers, and distancing prohibits that. I appreciate the thought of AC units, but it's been two months of extreme heat. The CDC states that no one should be wearing a mask that will cause a heat-related illness. I cannot imagine being a student in these hot boxes over the summer. How are our children forced to wear masks in these extreme conditions? Are you performing regular risk assessments to our children? Thankfully, my child doesn't have to attend summer school, but prior to the end of the year, my child was getting frequent headaches, so his doctor wrote a note for more mass breaks. But if he wanted one, he was forced to go in the back of the room from his peers. What child is going to want to feel segregated? So he chose to struggle with his headache and still, instead of, um, and he was afraid to go to the nurse. I, have, I even had to keep him home a few days because of the extreme temperatures. But it disrupts his education. Why can't summer schools align with summer camps? The guidance that was issued by the State Health Department and Education Department expired June 30th. Todd Wanda just announced they plan to align their, with their summer camp guidance. Como no longer has emergency executive orders, nor is there an emergency. Yeah, our children are still forced to wear a mask in school. Masks were initiated for emergency use. And if there is no emergency, how can we justify or enforce emergency measures? Like you said, we haven't even received any data on why. New York celebrating lifted, lifting nearly all mandates, 
but the mandate's on our children. How is this okay? Our children can go maskless everywhere but school. How, how can we tell our children it is safe for you to not wear a mask everywhere but school, when schools are supposed to be the safest place for children? The CDC also recently announced that states can make their own mask mandates, but here we are, no changes. Everyone just wants to point the fingers at who is responsible for mask policies because no one wants to take ownership or accountability of the harmful effects that they're taking place from masks. So tell me who is re reliable for any adverse effects. We parents are predicting that masks are being held as a leverage to force the experimental vaccine on our children. This vaccine is having serious recourse on our youth and the CDC is doing nothing. It was made apparent that these masks are not about our children's health when the state tried to start masking children in daycares and preschools 15 months after. They clearly did not win in their agenda. We parents, including myself, are prepared to withdraw our children from public schools if masks or vaccines are required for attendance come fall. How ironic is it that Cuomo got rid of religious exemptions in 2019, right before the pandemic. This displaced over 26,000 students in New York. Jennifer, America was built on freedom. As Americans, yeah. we have freedom of choice. Please, finish yeah. up, please. I'm almost done. Okay, we'll give you, we'll give you a few more minutes. Thank a few you. more seconds, okay? Thank Choice you. does not come with a price tag, ultimatums, briberies, threats, or discrimination. Choice is simply the freedom to decide between two or more possibilities, and either choice does not conflict with our constitutional rights. Okay, thank Only you. Only nine states have mandated school mask policies, New York being one of them. Florida recently ruled that mask mandates are unconstitutional, previously, present, and future. Our neighboring states have already announced that masks won't be required for the fall. Not only are masks unconstitutional, but their known risks yeah. outweigh any yeah. 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 Our parental yeah. rights yeah. need to be restored yeah. as we have had no yeah. opportunity yeah. to part yeah. partake in any yeah. decision making. Yeah. Yeah. Mrs. Mayor, we have to ask you to Listen, stop. stop. I pay taxes. taxes. We I understand that. I we understand that. You, I can you talk. Had no, you, no, you cannot. Everybody just, has. Like we're spending time arguing. Send, send, send an email with your full comments to us, and we'll be happy to look at it. I, I have. I've been contacting okay, and, we'll, and, 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 and we understand your concerns, ma'am. Okay? But we can't sit here and we can't. But we're taking time. We, 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 no, ma'am, 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 ma'am. Because you're not listening. Because you're not listening. All right. So okay. we're going to move on. In a recent study by the American Federation of Children, 74% of parents. Ma'am, I'm going to make a motion to dismiss the meeting, please. Uh, yep. Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Hey, uh, so bystanders, the upstanders. Okay. Um, yeah. So that adjourned the meeting at. We just missed the round table. Was all we had left. So that adjourned the meeting at eight oh six. Thank you.